Hello all my crafty friends. This is Kathy Champion. You're back with me uh, in my craft room here on my YouTube channel. And I just want to take the time to welcome you in. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. We're back to our Valentine's um, series. We only have a couple more days that I'm going to do Valentine's because we're getting to that crunch time. But this is um, a bundle called Always in My Heart. And the dies are called Floral Heart. And the reason for that is this huge die that is absolutely gorgeous. I am using basically just this uh, die out of here. Not only does it cut the floral pattern around the heart, it also cuts a, a heart out in the middle. And we're going to play around with exactly how we're going to use that. But this, uh, this particular set uh, has two sheets of dies. The one that you see here, and all of these little florals, these uh, actually, the stamp set itself has these little flowers, and these all will um, cut out these flowers. So it's a two-step stamp set, so you can out do the outline, and then choose the color ink that you want, and stamp the color within the flower. And these are really cute. I'm not using that today. I am going to use... Um, the sentiment that says you are always in my heart. That's the only thing I'm planning on stamping at this time. You know I'm subject to change my mind, but the the dies are going to be the star of the of the show. And in this die set you get this cute little heart border die. You get this little die that actually um, cuts out little hearts that you can use as an embellishment. And you get this beautiful banner. Uh, and I was playing around earlier today, and I had cut that banner, and I stamped it like this. And see how it sits up off of the card? Because it has uh, score marks where it bends. And then you just glue down the edges, and it gives you that, that beautiful dimension. I had made this card front because um, I was playing with flowers and uh, just playing around with different colors and patterns and and things like that and I put that together I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to use it but that's neither here nor there right now um, I do want to remind everyone that for the month of February uh, here is my host code but if you use that host code here we go uh, it'll be in the description below as well as well as on my blog but here is the host code for February spend fifty dollars or more before shipping and tax and you will get a free gift from me. Not only will you get a free gift from me, but until the 28th of this month, you will also be able to choose something out of the celebration catalog for free. Who doesn't love free? There's free paper. There's free stamp sets. There's only two items in the entire catalog where you have to spend $100 to get. So there's two um, like a tier two, and everything else is like a tier one, which means you spend 50 you get that um, you get to choose and there'll be a little place that will pop up under the bottom telling you that you have a free celebration item and for you to enter the number so and if you don't know what you want you can always call me I can provide you with the numbers or you can go to my blog and click on the celebration catalog and look at it yourself and if you're one of my regulars and you got a catalog you also got the celebration catalog and you probably already have that in your hand okay I have told you about the stamps and I told you about the dies, so now let me tell you about the paper. This is called True Love Designer Series Paper, and this is, if you love black and white, you will love this paper. But it goes further than that because you can color. This is like a giant coloring book. You can color all of these floral images and cut, and, and cut them out. There is a sheet... Um, that there is, a, I think there's a die that cuts one of them, but these are so easy to fussy cut because they're, I mean, you can just cut right around the flower. You can color them and then cut them out. Look at this. Polka dots. We're going to use some of that polka dot on our card today. Um, let's see what this one is. is that, oh, I've got this beautiful stripe. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful pack of, of designer series paper. All done in your black and whites. So pretty. I mean, it's so elegant. And let's see, there's another design. There's another one. 
and then we have black and white polka dots. And then the one that I'm using today um, is this one right here. And I love that one. And on the back of that one you have these diagonal stripes that is stunning. So if you love um, florals and stripes and polka dots and you love black and white, and even if you don't love black and white, you can color this with your anything. You can do colored pencils, you can do water-based markers. You have to be careful with water-based markers because this is paper, and if you get it too wet with the water-based markers like the stamp, I'm sorry, like the Stampin' Rights or Tombows, any of those type of water-based markers, your Stampin' Blends, any alcohol marker works great with these. So just thought I would throw that all out there and let you know what we're working with. And now here are my pieces that I have cut. Stunning, huh? <laughs> I mean, it's not even a card and it looks pretty. This is one of the um, hearts that it cuts out. And look how beautiful that is on that white. Isn't that gorgeous? It also cuts out this little middle heart out of there. So that cuts that solid heart. Um, I've got some side pieces because we are going to be scoring our card. And then I have the piece for the center. We're going to do a gatefold card. And these are going to be on the front. And I also have a white piece that I cut that's the same as that. And I have the white heart as well. And I also, just for a little emphasis or a little pizzazz, I cut a piece of this out of the, oh, the designer series paper called love you always and this is beautiful it comes in the, the coco rose the blushing bride and i think the sahara sand yeah so this is beautiful um foil accented paper it is it's just stunning so Let's go ahead and see how we're going to put our card together. I'm going to move all of these little embellishment pieces out of our way. Let's get these off as well. I'm just going to move this over to the side for right now. And I want to work on our card base. I'm going to actually use my school board for this instead of my trimmer. And we are going to score in three places on this card. We are going to score at, what is the, uh, sometimes I have trouble because I've got something sitting under here or whatever, but um, all right, two and one eighth. And if you turn it here, we'll see what it's supposed to be. It should have been six and one, two, three eighths. Let me make that correction on my template. Um, six and one, two, three eighths. So next time I'll have that correct. So I'm just going to go back over here and do this at two and one eighth. Just like that. And now we are going to turn this over and press it down. Grab my bone folder because this is so important to get this card folded as nice and straight and even as you possibly can. That's so true with a gatefold because you want that gatefold to come together completely even right there in the middle. And if you do your scoring properly, <laughs> unlike what I just did, um, it will work. I don't know where I came up with that one eighth, but that was not... That was not the, um, let me turn my phone off. I do apologize. Or at least let me um, silence it. There we go. Okay, sometimes my phone can be a bit of a distraction, but with my husband at work, and I have children scattered all over the United States and grands, so well, I won't say all over the United States. Everybody's on the East Coast, from Michigan to Florida. So, Michigan, Virginia, North Carolina, and Florida. So, <laughs> it's crazy. All right, the first thing that I want to do 
is I want to put my mats on my front panels. And I have chosen this beautiful dark black print for my panels. Isn't that gorgeous? So we are going to use um, some liquid glue for this today. I want a little wiggle room, so that's why I'm going to use my liquid. And remember, don't put it right to the edge if you're using liquid glue because it's going to ooze out a little bit anyway. And you don't want it to ooze out onto your card. So once I get that down, we're just going to press it. And then we have another piece. Oh, that's not the right one. We have another piece for this. These pieces are 1 and 7 8 by 5 and 3 8. And like I said, don't worry about getting the measurements. Um, I will have everything here on the screen. Uh, so you'll see the measurements as I call them out. But they also will be in the description of the video. So you never have to worry about anything I do not having the instructions. I will make sure that you always have a list of the supplies I used along with the numbers so that if you want to order any of this I try to make it as easy as possible. Now I have a black piece that we're going to use on our panel but we're going to build our heart on this and I have the white heart that's going to look absolutely breathtakingly stunning on this. Isn't that gorgeous? And I'm going to leave this inside where it's at because I think I might want to heat emboss in there. I'm not real sure yet, but I just may. I'm going to bring my silicone craft mat out. And this side is so dirty, y'all, because I was playing around this morning. But I just want to show you. You can actually use a little spatula. This is one of my Cricut spatula. You can use anything like that. And just look how that glue just comes right up off of there. So, you know, it just doesn't stick to it. So it's a very forgiving surface to glue on. And that's why I always like it, especially if I'm doing anything as um, um, detailed as this little floral heart is. Because, you know, we don't want to get glue all over everything. And this thing, you can take it to the sink and wash it with some warm water. Everything just flows right off of it. And... Uh, it's, it is just a great little thing to have in your craft room. I'm going to actually take a little bit of my stamp cleaner and just wipe it off to get that glue off of it right now. I don't want to do this over my card, so I'm going to do this kind of off from the camera. But there we go. I do have one little spot right here of glue. But this was like a gob of glue that I had put, in da I had put down. And see how that just peels up? Silicone. Such a great invention. All right, I'm going to put my Stampin' Mist up. If you need a good stamp cleaner, I highly recommend the Stampin' Mist. Use that with your um, a Stampin' Scrub. I don't use it with my chamois. I just wet my chamois. Um, and this is another one of our stamp cleaners that's really neat to have. And you just you can clean your stamps with water. I put a new one in this morning because I'm going to use one for cleaning and then one for kind of just rubbing off uh, like a second clean. This one has been washed and it is clean. It is just stained. They will stain, but you can take them under the sink with some uh, dish soap and wash them. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so let's get this over here. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is centered on this piece of black. So I'm going to turn this over using my liquid glue. I'm going to just dab, dab, dab. And what I'm doing is just tapping. I'm tapping this glue all around on this heart. All around the edges, especially the larger areas like where these leaves are at. Because this is just a great way to make sure that we adhere everything. And I think that's sufficient. So now I'm going to move this and bring this over. Actually, I actually need the other side of that. But we can't use that, so I'm just going to do it here. I want to make sure that this heart is centered as best as I can get it. Just like that. 
Now I want this heart to dry before I take it to my card and I'll tell you why. Because I got glue down and up and it was easier just to, to, ink, um, to glue it all over than it was to try to get the glue in a certain spot. It was just easier to do it that way. So let's lay this over out of our way. Oh, I think that's so stunning. Now, I did cut out of the uh, that beautiful paper, like I told you, the small colored heart, but I don't know that that heart is gonna send me on the front of my card because this black and white is so stunning. Uh, I don't think I like that. So I'll just save that for another project. I do love this, though. I think this is absolutely stunning. And what I'm, wanted to, I'm looking at is I want to get this heart centered. You know, I don't think my heart's on here straight. And let's see if we can get this up without too big of a heartache, pardon the pun. And we're going to turn this over and use the other side. I'm just doing a little huffing on it because if you just huff your breath just right there underneath the edges, sometimes your breath will, the warmth and the heat from your breath will lift it right up. I think we did really good on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over and use the other side because um, we got a hot mess back here. <laughs> so I'm just going to turn that over like that. And we're going to try this again. And I think what I might do is put this on here first. And the reason for that, that will give me a better chance of getting my... You know what, I'm going to need a whole new piece of this. And this piece measures... three and three quarters by three inches. So I am gonna, yeah, three and three quarters by three. I'm gonna cut another piece. You know why? This is gonna show when we open our card and I don't want that ugliness underneath there. So let's get our trimmer. Sometimes we just have to think our way through our crafting, whatever it might be. And you know, I thought about using the black one on the front, but I don't know. Okay, let's cut this piece down. It needs to be three and three fourths, right there. Three and three fourths by three. And I, I designed it with that, that in mind. I didn't want to cover up too much of my designer series paper because I think it's beautiful. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just eyeballing right now. Trying to get my bearings on exactly where I want that to be. And then I am going to hold it here and lift this over. And I know now that I want to put glue on that side. So I just made myself a little mark so that I could make sure that I've got my glue where I needed it to be. I'm not going to cross past that line. So let's... Alrighty, now I'm going to close this card back up and I'm going to center again. And we need to come that way just a little bit and up just a little bit. That looks good. Very nice. So now I need to bring my heart back and you're going to see now why I wanted to take it up. 
the point of the heart, top and bottom, is going to give me my center. So I'm going to go back in with my liquid glue. I'm being brave. I'm doing it without my mat. <laughs> Not smart. This time I'm just going to put the glue on the larger areas. And I think that will be sufficient. Now I'm going to close this down like that. And I am going to do my very best to center the heart just like that. I love that. Isn't that so pretty? I love the way that um, the floral heart just really gives um, so much dimension to this card. And now we need to decorate and do our inside piece. So again, I have um, I have a piece of, of uh, basic black for the center. And again, I'm going to use my... Yeah, I'll tell you what, we're going to put this together here and then put the whole piece in. So I have another piece of, of this uh, polka dot, the black polka dot. This piece right here is 4 by 5 and 1 4. And this piece is 3 and 3 fourths by 5. I need to write that down here. The mat is 3 and 3 fourths by 5. Okay. So let's go ahead and put some glue on this. And this beautiful floral is on the back of the polka dots. It's so hard to decide which one to use when the paper is this gorgeous. Uh, if y'all have not gotten this pack of paper, and I'm here to tell you, this pack of paper is not just for Valentine's. Oh my heavens. If you love a black and white palette, this is superb. Alright, now I'm going to put some glue on the back of this. And then we're going to take this to the inside of our card. And I'm going to even it up. I'm getting that nice little even border all the way around. And there we got that. So now I have my pieces. This is the other side of the polka dot. And I thought, I love florals with polka dots. But you know what? This is needing a border behind it. Did I not cut borders? I didn't. I'm wondering if I want to border that or is it going to make it too bulky. This looks so good with a border behind it. We'll have to cut this down if we decide to do the border. All right. Somebody yell at me out there, <laughs> even though y'all aren't watching me live. Hopefully, once I get to the 1,000 um, point, I plan on trying to do maybe a, one live a week um, to start out with because I'll be new at that, and it might be a little bit intimidating, but hey, I'm, I'm game. All right, I'm going to make these one, I mean, yeah, one and seven eighths. five and three eighths. So we're going to go one, two, and three. Remember that your uh, trimmer has, um, it has quarters, it has eighths, and it has sixteenths. So when you are looking at your um, your measurement, your lines, remember that the tiny line, the last line over is sixteenths. The first one is a sixteenth, and the second one so you kind of have to skip over those. Yeah, this is going to look so much better. So now what we need to do is take this down. 1 and 7 eighths. We need to go to 1 and 5 eighths. So 1 and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I basically do that. I count over because, you know, numbers are hard. <laughs> For some of us more than others. 
And now this, in this way, we need to take it to um, five and three eighths would be five and a quarter. I think that'd be right. I'll try it and see. Next, we need another another little smidgen off of there, like an eighth. And then this puts this piece at being five and one eighth. Yeah, five and one eighth. There we go. All right, I'm going to put these two pieces together. I'll tell you what, let's cut the other one down first. Let me grab another piece of black. All right, we're going to do this at one and seven eighths. five and one eighth. Isn't that what we said? I think that's what we said. No, five and three eighths. Yeah, five and one, two, three eighths. And that will go here. That looks right. All right, now we need to cut this one down to one and y'all I don't know if y'all have trouble measuring like I do but sometimes the math I have certain days where it all just clicks so good in my head and then I have other days that are like this and I just don't get it all right this is one and five eighths yeah one and five eighths so one and I'm going to do my eights. One, two, three, four, five. So that would be five eights right there. And then this is going to be five and one eight. We measure and make sure. Yep, five and one eight. That's easy to do. Five and one eight. All right, so now we've got these pieces ready to put together. So let's see, I think I want it to go that direction. And this one like this. And you have to decide what feels right to you as far as pattern paper goes when it's kind of going any direction. I don't really think it matters. But, um, you know, use your own discretion. After all, it's your card, right? You can have it going in whichever direction you would like for it to go. All right, let's put this down, getting our little border all the way around. Very nice. And then that will go there. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. I've been wanting to do something black and white with this paper. Um, for a while, I think I'm going to do it that way. I just think it's so pretty. I did color some of these and I did a card with it and I thought they were beautiful. So now we're ready to put this down and what you want to do when you put this down, you want to try to make sure that these even up as best you can. And a lot of times it's an illusion so when you're dealing with black and white and mats and patterns, it can be an optical illusion. So let's just go ahead and put some glue on. Let's just not overthink it. We're just going to get some glue down on there and then get this. I'm overthinking it, y'all. And we're going to get this one right in here like that and press it, press it, press it. And you can see what makes this card so special is all of these layers. And you know what? 
we haven't stamped a thing. The only thing we've done is cut paper. I did the die cut um, ahead of uh, the video so that they would be ready. So all we're doing is just gluing down our pieces. And look at that. Is that not stunning? Now we need to decide, and this is where I had cut the black heart out. Stunning, huh? I love it. I think it's so beautiful. And I'm wondering if we want to put this heart in. And I think I want this heart to be, well, I don't want to elevate. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this heart down. I'd really love to pop this up with some little minis. Oh, that would be so pretty. Do we dare? Why not? I'm feeling adventurous today. How about you? <laughs> I am going to glue this heart right in the middle, and then I'm going to get some little tiny dimensionals. And we are going to go to town and pop up the floral heart. I wasn't going to do it, but hey, I'm feeling adventurous today and a little risky. Sometimes that can be fun, right? As long as we don't get in trouble or get anybody else in trouble. And we're crafting, so I don't think there's any trouble in the craft room. I'm going to use my little uh, mini dimensionals. And these things are superb. Um, I'm going to use my Take Your Pick tool to be able to get these where I need them. So let's put our top back on our liquid glue so we don't have a clumpy mess. And I am going to, oop, I took the wrong end off of that. We're going to use the pick end of this. And I am going to pick up, oops, looks like my little backer's already come off of that one. I'm just going to lift that off because if you get the wrong side on it, it will not come off. It will stick like crazy. So I'm going to put this one down. Right about there. Make sure it's not showing. And that one is, I'm going to try to press that in just a little bit more like that. Yeah, much better. I'm going to try to be more careful. Since I'm working with this tiny little piece, let me grab my bifocal so I can see exactly what I'm doing. You know, black can be tricky for older eyes. We all know this. No, we don't need one there. Let's put this. All right, now this is where we got to be careful because when we put this down, it is down. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that. Now we do need sentiments, so we have to decide how we're going to work our sentiments. So, let me go and find some stamp sets and find out exactly what I want to do here. I'm actually thinking about a banner like I did on this one that would go across the heart, but I'm afraid that it will get lost in the in the in transition. So we might be able to do a black one across here. All right, let me think on that. We'll be right back. All right, we are back, and I have decided exactly what I want to do with this card. And what I thought I wanted to do for my inside, I want to heat and boss. Uh, you were always in my heart, but I want it on that black heart. And I'm afraid that if I try to heat and boss on top of this, that since I've already put it down, it's not going to give me that effect that I want. So remember this piece that we messed up? 
I am going to, let me zoom y'all in just a little bit. I am going to take this piece. It's just glue on the back. We're going to glue it on the back anyway. I'm going to lay this down because all I want out of here is just that heart. So the rest of that can be trash and I'm, I don't have a problem with that. So I'm going to run that through my um, dye machine. And just to get that heart out of the middle. Just like that. And the rest of these little pieces are, are trash, so we're not even going to worry about those. I just want that piece there. So I'm going to take this to my trash, and then I'm going to put this, break all of my little crumbs into my trash can so I don't have to worry about picking all of those up. Just like that. Oh, and I do have one little piece on there. So the next thing that I want to do is I got this piece, this is a piece of the velveteen, the red velveteen that was left over from the mini catalog, um, the holiday catalog. And if you don't have any of this, you could definitely use just a real red um, cardstock. But I thought it would be nice just to use that little bit of velvet. So I'm going to put that down and that's cutting the outline for our word love. And thought that will give us that little pop of red on the front that will make this look so pretty. So I'm going to take that out because we're going to heat emboss on that. This is going to go across here probably about like that. But now we need to cut our word love out. And I have that die right here. So another little scrap of my black. Put it down onto my cut mat. I'm going to lay that down and sandwich that in and push it through my machine. And remember when you cut this, your L is going to be separate from the rest of your letters and that's, that's fine. Now I am going to put these back because I'm using this from always um, the always does. That's the one that the word love and always are on and it cuts out both the word and the shadow. So I cut that shadow in that red and I'm going to go back over it with the bl black lettering and I think that's just going to give it a nice look. So let's just pull that up and you might need a little spatula and the Take Your Pick tool has a spatula, um, one of the attachments to it. It's a spatula, but I grab this one all the time because it's just convenient. And uh, you might need the little pokey tool. A lot of times these little pieces will come out. Yeah, see they all came out perfect. So I'm going to lay those over and let's get these plates out of our way. And now I want to bring back in my silicone, silicone craft mat because we are going to need to ink, not ink, <laughs> put glue down on this. That's the word I was trying to use. So there is a technique that makes this work. And what you have to do is make sure that you do your, um, your L first. And I'm going to show you by putting down a little liquid glue right there. And I'm just going to use this little sponge and I'm going to dab into that and then just dabbing over top of that L. Oops. You just want to hang on to it so it doesn't get away from you like it did me. But we're just going to keep dabbing that glue and once you get it like that. You want to bring that to that velveteen or that cardstock, whichever you're using, and just lay it in just like that. And press it. And see how beautiful that shadow is behind that. So now we're going to do the same thing with the OBE. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to dab the sponge in that glue and just bring it to the back of this. Mm. 
making sure I get enough of it on here that's going to adhere. Now, with, when you put this one down, I'm going to move this out of the way, you want to line up your E because everything else will kind of fall in place if you get that beginning letter and that ending letter. So you just want to press it on there, make sure that it adheres. And like I said, a lot of times I'll just lay a stamp block or something over it um, if I need to. But that looks like it's going to hold. So now we want to decide exactly how we want to put this. Do we want to put it on like that, where it looks like it's through the heart? Do we want to do it at an angle like that? I think I like it at that angle. There's just something about that that is just pretty and pleasing to the eye. Now this piece, I do want to pop it up. So I'm going to grab my dimensionals. They are here somewhere, right in front of me. And I am going to make sure it's not showing on the edges. And I'm going to use some of these little smaller pieces to get up in these little crevices. Just like that. And like this. And I think I'll just put one full size one right there. And that's sh that should be sufficient to hold this. And now we're just going to pull these backers off. We got that all adhered and just see how lovely that is. I really like the way that looks. And so I am going to use my tweezers and I'm going to hold on to it right there. And I want to lay this down so that everything fits inside of the heart. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? I love that look. So now we're going to heat emboss this little piece. And I want to grab a white. There's my white powder. I'm also going to grab a coffee filter. I've got my tweezers. And we need our Versamark. Let's see, this is my newer one. So let's grab it. And of course we need a stamp block. And I'm going to do my same little trick. I'm going to line that up right there. And let's see, I need to work up this way a little bit higher so you can see what I'm doing. So let me... Just adhere that on, and I'm going to bring this back down, and I'm going to just really give this a real good inking, and I'm going to stamp this right in the middle of this heart. Just like that. That looks like a really good image. I'm going to hold it over top of my coffee filter and I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a generous amount of my, my embossing powder and I like to flick it to try to get off any of it that I don't want on there. This looks like I didn't get a really good image but we'll see. I don't think that might work. It 
it doesn't hurt to go back over it a few times. And that looks a lot better. Now I'm going to use this coffee filter. That's why I like to use these because then I can dump any of that excess powder back into my little jar and I don't have a lot of waste. And that's exactly what you want. And then your embossing powders will last you a very long time. Now I'm going to turn on my heat tool and let it heat up. So just uh, bear with me and we will be, I'll be right back with you. It does such a beautiful job at putting a sentiment on to something like this when you really want that to pop. So now let's bring our card back over. And all I want to do is I want to put some glue down. And then we're just going to sit that down into that, on top of that heart. Now had I thought about this ahead of time, I would have heat embossed this one and then glued it down inside. But I didn't, and it's okay. We still made it work. So I'm going to take glue, and I'm not going to do a whole lot. I'm just going to swirl some in here, just like that. And then I am going to pick this up, and I'm going to sit it right down in there, just like this. And our little gatefold Valentine's card is done. How pretty is that card? And look at the, the wow factor. And you might say, well, where do I write a message? You could put a decorative piece on the back here, or you could just write and sign on the, bear, on the back. What's so neat about this card is this card will stand up. So if anybody wanted to display this card, it would be very easy um, to set this card up like that. But I hope that you enjoyed um, the process of watching me uh, make this card. It was, um, it's not a hard card at all to make if you just follow the guidelines and get your scoring right and then cut your mats. Um, it's a very simple card and I can see this card uh, being for a lot more than just this Valentine's layout. But I love it with this black paper, that little splash of red in the middle and then the black and white on the inside and the little sentiment that says, you are always in my heart. I love that. I hope you enjoyed, and like I uh, always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. He is so worthy. If you're interested in purchasing any of the products that I used in making this card, I'll have a list of all the products, the order number, um, the colors, the measurements, and everything, they'll be in the description below, as well as over on my blog. Thank you again so much for tuning in and spending a little of your time with me. And until we craft again, may God bless and keep you. Bye-bye.